Happy Friday, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on this edition of Business Daily. I'm Ijeun in Seoul. We have a lot of stories lined up for you today, so let's get started with a look at today's highlights. The Brexit campaign sees an unexpected turn with less than a week to go until Brits hit the polls to vote on whether or not to stay in the European Union. Market jitters are still well alive. Samsung lands first place again in a recent survey, being named the most reputable brand in the Asia-Pacific for a fifth straight year. We have these stories and more coming right up. But first, Korea's finance minister says the government is planning to unleash more measures, including active fiscal support, to step up growth in the economy. His comments further fuel speculation that the government might employ a supplementary budget in the second half of the year. Our Hong Jae starts us off. It was just earlier this year that Finance Minister Yu Yido wiped out expectations of a new extra budget being introduced this year. But on Friday, he in effect turned around his comments while expressing the government's resolve to put the economy back on track for solid recovery. Facing downside risks like sluggish exports and domestic demand, we will try to breathe new life into each economic sector and think about ways the government can take a more active role in revving up the economy. Yu's remarks came during a meeting with heads of major institutions where he talked about how the government should run the economy in the second half of this year. With that, there's growing belief that the minister is signaling an extra budget may be back on the table as conditions at home and abroad remain sluggish. Exports have plunged for almost a year and a half. Domestic demand is showing little sign of gaining momentum due to snowballing household debt and the government's recent corporate restructuring drive that will cause inevitable and massive job losses. The central bank's recent rate cut to a historic low of 1.25 percent is also adding to speculation of a supplementary budget. We cannot escape the current slow growth and weakening growth potential simply with our monetary policy. Concerns still remain that the extra budget could worsen the country's fiscal soundness, but calls for the government to pump more cash into the economy is winning more support as uncertainties stemming from a possible rate hike by the U.S. Fed and the U.K. referendum next week on whether to stay in the European Union are posing more threats to the economy. Hong Jie, Business Daily. Samsung picked up another first place ranking in a survey of Asia's best brands after earning the top score in a recent brand reputation study just a week ago. Our Oh Jung tells us the details. Samsung has topped a recent survey as the most trusted company with the best reputation in the Asia Pacific region for a fifth straight year. The survey on consumer brand perception was conducted by Hong Kong media magazine Campaign Asia Pacific and global market researcher Nielsen. Apple came in second, moving up two spots from the year before, followed by Sony, Nestle and Panasonic. LG, another Korean consumer electronics company in the top 10, ranked seventh, and Korean retailer Lotte ranked 16th, rising a notch from the previous year. Samsung's first-place finish comes after it got the highest marks on brand reputation a week ago on a survey by U.S. market researcher Reputation Institute thanks to its attractive marketing campaigns, active social responsibility, and company culture. The Asia's top 1,000 brand survey covers 13 markets in the Asia-Pacific region, including Australia, China, Hong Kong, India, Japan, Singapore, and Korea. The study deals with brands in 14 major categories such as food, consumer electronics, retail and personal care. Oh jung Business Daily. Meanwhile, Korea's top shipbuilder, Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering, has maintained its place as the world's largest shipbuilder by order backlog for 19 straight months now. According to global researcher Clarkson Research Services, Daewoo Shipbuilding had the largest order backlog, totaling almost 7.5 million compensated gross tons as of the end of May. 
Samsung Heavy Industries and Hyundai Heavy Industries came in second and third respectively, with figures both slightly under 4.4 million compensated gross tons. But the three main shipbuilders have been struggling in the face of a global downturn in fresh orders. The companies have announced major restructuring plans, and an estimated 6,000 workers are expected to lose their jobs this year. Korea has unveiled a set of measures to boost the integration of culture and tourism and enhance competitiveness as a tourist destination. President Park geun who chaired a meeting on tourism promotion, emphasized the need to foster job-creating growth engines in this sector and better cater to the needs of foreign visitors. One of the new projects announced includes plans to create a 4,500-kilometer walking trail that runs along the demilitarized zone and connects all three coastlines of the country. Once complete, the trail is expected to attract up to 5.5 million tourists annually. The government also said it will foster more multilingual tour guides and create a mobile app for foreign tourists so that they can report difficulties that they face during their trip. A new commission will also be launched to help strengthen integration and cooperation for tourism among related ministries. A recent OECD report showed that Korea ranks the second highest in terms of the senior employment, that is, workers 65 years and older. But positions are still limited, and many want more work. Our Kim mo tells us more. It's lunchtime, and this restaurant, run by 12 seniors aged 60 years or older, is starting to get packed. Funded by the government, this eatery aims to provide more work opportunities for elders. I feel the best when they compliment me on the food. Some people tell me they wish their mothers were working here, too. State-run housing developer Korea Land and Housing Corporation has also employed a 1,000 senior workers this year. Applications were open to everyone aged 55 years or older, and those hired have been tasked with duties like the safety inspection of apartment facilities, environmental maintenance and supporting the everyday needs of residents. Rather than efficiency, I think it's about us being able to understand people better because we're older. But some also express frustration about the paltry paycheck of $540 per month and the short contract period. I signed with them for about five to six months, but I would like to stay on for at least a year. And I wish other public corporations would employ senior workers as well. The number of seniors who are looking for jobs is only growing, and those who end up securing work has been on the rise as well. Roughly 3.7 million older workers were employed as of March, taking up roughly 14.3 percent of the total workforce. This means senior workers outstrip those in their 20s who newly landed jobs by about 59,000. But with the majority of jobs being temporary positions, the call to make improvements not only in the quantity but quality of these jobs is all the more pressing. Kim mo Business Daily. We're now counting down to the referendum that will decide the UK's future, inside or outside the European Union. For more on this, we're now joined by our Eunice Kim in the studio. So Eunice, it's been quite a week for market volatility. I mean, with bonds yields reaching new lows into the negative region even, and also investors rushed to safe haven assets. Yeah, you're absolutely right, to you. The one thing investors do not like is uncertainty, and that was plenty to be had this week in the run-up to what's being described as the vote of a lifetime. But for now, the spirited debates in the UK are silenced as the country mourns the sudden death of a rising star. Big Ben overlooks a makeshift memorial, people grieving the passing of UK lawmaker Joe Cox. The 41-year-old MP was fatally stabbed and shot in broad daylight earlier in the day in northern England where she had been to meet her constituents. The advocate for refugees and the poor and the mother of two young children had just a day earlier campaigned for the UK to stay in the European Union with her family. Both sides suspended their campaigns Thursday and Friday, the rancorous debate taking a back seat. 
Financial markets recovered some of their losses from the wild week. As major central banks around the world held their fire, the UK's sterling has been volatile since the start of the week. On Monday, the pound hit a two-month low against the greenback, as surveys on Friday showed the leave camp was ahead of the remainers by double digits, an about-face that forced financial firms to sit up and take notice. Markets worry about event risk. They anticipate that there would be bad news for the global economy. And of course, with the global economy already fragile, Brexit could be a particularly unpleasant pill to swallow. Over four days, more than £98 billion was wiped off the values of Britain's largest companies. Shockwave spread to European markets. On the stock's Europe 600, all sectors were trading lower as investors moved their money to government bonds, driving their yields to record lows. The German 10-year Bund yield entered negative space for the first time. That did not keep investors from snatching them up. Ultimately, the ball will be in the court of British voters come June 23rd. Many of them see retaking sovereignty as a way to send a message to an inefficient EU. Lance Foreman, whose salmon smoking factory has been in business since 1905, is one such person. Um, we had to spend thousands of pounds last year on printing new packaging so that a pack of smoked salmon could have a warning sign on the back saying contains fish. It's completely mad. I actually think that the EU should have a huge warning sign on the top of it saying contains nuts. Still others can't deny the benefits of having access to a 500 million strong market with little red tape. I shall be voting for us to remain in the EU. Um, I think it's crucial that we do, certainly from our perspective as a small business selling into Europe, uh, particularly selling alcohol um, and some of the sensitivities of that across uh, some of the states. It's important that uh, we... So, you know, if people didn't take the UK referendum seriously before, it definitely looks like that's not the case now. I mean, this is going to be a very important vote, no doubt about it. But right. what are the odds looking like right now? Well, so the polls have been suspended for now, Thursday and Friday, along with the campaigns. But uh, so we'll have to wait to see when they all resume together, perhaps on Monday. Mm -hmm. But according to major online betting exchange Betfair on Thursday, that's uh, Korea time, the leave camp still had the lead 60% to remains 40%. Now an Ipsos Mori telephone poll had also showed the levers ahead, albeit at a smaller margin, 53 to 47. But, you know, some are wondering what impact the latest incident, the murder of Labour MP Joe Cox, could have on public opinion. Joe Cox, of course, had been campaigning for the UK to stay in the EU. Now, what's the European Union's reaction to all this so far? I mean, considering that Britain is a very big player in the Union, and if it leaves the Union, it's definitely going to have a big impact. You're absolutely right, and you can bet the leaders of Germany, of France, and of many other European countries in the EU bloc are watching this very, very closely. Germany's foreign minister has urged the UK to stay in the EU bloc, saying it has a voice that will be honored, urging to reform together as an EU without the UK would most certainly face an identity crisis. One thing you can say with certainty, if Britain votes to leave the European Union, it would not just go on 28 minus 1, but it would shake the European Union and it would require a concerted effort to ensure its stability. And Germany's finance minister Wolfgang Schaubler has added he would not disregard the possibility of other countries quitting the European Union if, of course, the UK chooses to do so. And, of course, the reverberations of the referendum has impacted Asian markets, especially that of Japan. Yeah, you're absolutely right. This is a huge headache uh, for Bank of Japan's governor, Haruhiko Kuroda, who, of course, has been working very hard to try to reach that 2% inflation target. But investors are fleeing to the safe haven currency, the Japanese yen, in droves. And as you'll see in this graph, the yen has been getting stronger against the U.S. dollar this week. 
week. That strengthening on Thursday, coming after the Bank of Japan chose to do nothing and the U.S. Federal Reserve, of course, uh, citing Brexit as a reason for not moving on interest rates as well. The yen kept moving past the 105 mark and the appreciation is giving Japan's bond yields heavy downward pressure. Yields from 5 to 40 years June, all recording record lows, some even going deeper beyond the negative uh, rates. Wow, that's incredible. And I'm sure that Japan is going to keep its eye on the strengthening of the yen from here on out. As will we. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming in today, Eunice. You bet. Thanks. And that wraps it up for today and this week. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll be back next week with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. Until then, goodbye.